Hi, and welcome to the Azure DevOps Fundamentals Series. My name is Jeff, and today we're going to talk about how to create a service connection in Azure DevOps. Before jumping in, we do need to take care of some prerequisites. So, obviously, first, we need an organization, Azure DevOps organization, with a project. And you need to be signed in as the owner of the Azure pipelines in the organization. Um, in Azure, you need to be signed in as the owner of an Azure subscription because a service connection connects the Azure DevOps project to a subscription, or we can specify at a, at a resource group level and on a management group level, a connection as well. But for, for all three options, you still need the subscription uh, owner permissions. Um, if you're going to use multiple accounts because your Azure DevOps organization is not connected to the same Active Directory as the Azure subscription, you need to make sure that you sign in with both accounts in the same browser session because the, that's, that token is going to be reused to create some stuff in the background in Azure. And we're going to show you, I'm going to show you uh, what is going to be created uh, later on. So in, uh, Azure Active Directory, the user in question must also have directory read role assigned. And in addition, um, this user needs to have either application administrator, application developer, or the cloud application administrator uh, permission. And which one you need depends a bit on the configuration. If you have the, uh, for instance, the setting user can register application settings enabled or not. So um, if you're not sure, application administrator, is always the safest choice to go for. And you can remove these permissions after you're done as well. So um, you can still try to focus on least privilege as much as you can. With all these prerequisites out of the way um, and everything set up, we can go ahead and see what fun we can have creating a, a service connection. Let's dive in. So as you can see, we have the demo Jeff uh, organization with the Cloud Explorer, something we created earlier. Uh, with the Cloud Explorer project. And the first thing we're going to go look at is the project settings. From the project settings, we scroll all the way down to pipelines. And in pipelines, we have the service connection. You can see we have already uh, some of them demoed out. This isn't a problem. We simply create, click uh, in the top right corner on new service connection. If you don't have any service connections at all, we'll even have a button in the middle, a big blue button saying the same thing. Uh, let's click new service connection. There are a lot of different ver uh, variations of a service connection possible. In our case, we're focusing on the Azure Resource Manager one. So we're going to select the Azure Resource Manager, scroll all the way down, and click next. And in the Azure Resource, we have Manager Service Connection. We have three, four options these days. We have the automatic one, the manual one, a managed identity, and a publishing profile. Since we're covering the fundamentals, we're going to stick with the recommended one, which is the automatic one. So leave that one uh, enabled. And click next. What happens now is, as you noticed when I was talking about the uh, prerequisites, where you need to be signed in, in the same browser is that uh, is, uh, um, all your permissions in Azure, in the tenant uh, that is present, uh, that you signed in with, within this browser session uh, is retrieved. So in this case, the subscriptions are retrieved. You can see all the subscriptions that I have in my demo tenant are visible right here. And we, if we select one, we should be able to get the resource groups as well. So let's go for the depth one. And you can see here, the resource groups are visible as well. So jumping a bit back to the scopes, we have three scopes, like I mentioned. Subscriptions, management groups, and we have a machine learning workspace. In this case, we're going to continue with the subscription one because that fits best with the fundamentals mindset uh, that we're covering right now. So uh, we're going to choose the subscription, which is the D. And here, something interesting happens is we, if we want to set up the service connection to be specifically scoped to a uh, resource group, we can select that specific resource group within that subscription. If we want a service connection to be scoped on a subscription level, just leave this uh, checkbox uh, drop-down box empty. 
as the next one, we need a name, obviously. And this name, we're going to see it in the Azure DevOps part. So let's give it something interesting, uh, like uh, Cloud Explorers uh, Dev Sub uh, SC Service Connection. And there are no, no, no real uh, limitations on how you want to call it. It's not going to be used for any URL or anything. It's literally a um, a name tag that is going to be added. Uh, so you can use numbers, special characters, etc. cetera here. Um, figure out what works best. If you have a naming convention, even better. So add a subscription, uh, add a description to it. This is a test uh, connection to Azure. And the last one is a checkbox that's actually, uh, that's actually selected by default. And I really would advise to uncheck it because what happens with this uh, grant access permissions to all pipelines? If this checkbox is enabled by default, any existing or future pipelines that are part of this project uh, will have access to the service connection. Imagine you created the service connection on a very high level on a management group. Uh, and because of it, it has access to a large part um, of your Azure uh, subscriptions, environments, workloads, applications. Uh, so it has very powerful permissions. And if you leave this checkbox on, anybody who creates a pipeline, who has sufficient permissions to create a pipeline, will be able to use this level of permissions. If you leave it out off, every time a pipeline is created and this service connection is uh, referenced, a user with sufficient permissions over this service connection will need to go in and actually allow uh, for the service connection to be used. So this is much more in line, disabling it, unchecking it, is much more in line with the least privileged and the zero trust approach here. We simply do not trust our pipelines in this case. So with everything completed, last step is just simply save it. And as you can see, it will be set up in the background. A very cool pen rotating and do the same. Hey. And there you have it. The service connection we just created is visible in the list. Let's dig in a bit because there are still some interesting things to show what the service connection exists from. And if we open it, there, is actually, there are actually two parts here. The first part of it is the administrative part that we can see right now in uh, Azure DevOps. We can see the details that we just used over here. You can see some of it is uh, you can change and some things you can't change in. And there's a verify button present here. This button verifies if the credentials that are used in Azure are still valid for this uh, connection to use. So if you click it, it should verify and say, hey, successful. And there's a very, very cool feature behind it that most people are not aware. Just keep in mind, remember, verify button. We're going to revisit it in a couple of minutes you will be like, ah. So let's leave the settings for what they are and jump to the second part. And the second part of a service connection exists for in Azure. In, and it exists in the form of what is called a managed service principle or actually an app registration. So if you click on that link, it actually redirects us to our app registration what, uh, that has been created in the background. This is why you needed all those Azure permissions, even the Active Directory ones to create this one. And you can see the name is really horrific. So what happens here? Uh, Azure DevOps, when creating this name, picks up the um, organization, then it picks up the project name, and then it actually adds the ID of the subscription to it. And if you have multiple a service connections uh, pointing to the same subscription from the same project, which could be the case, you will end up with service connections having identical name. Because, uh, oh, sorry, the app registrations having an identical name because a name can be reused. It's not a unique value for an app registration. So my personal advice and experience is to change this. Go to branding. And you can see that same name here. Just go back to Azure DevOps, copy paste, 
unless you have a very specific naming convention for your app, uh, app registrations, just copy it. Uh, copy the name that you used. That way you always have the correct reference. And click Save. And it doesn't impact anything on the, uh, on the um, service connection sites. It's simply, again, changing a uh, name because the reference that, uh, that has been made is made somewhere else. It's actually made based on um, the application ID, object ID, directory tenant combination with something which is a, a client secret. And we can see it here. This client secret was just created in the background and this password value, this also, well, actually the secret value is then stored somewhere where we cannot access but basically in the settings in Azure DevOps. And when you create it this way through the portal, the, um, a service connection secret is valid for two years. You can see that here, right? So when you create it, it's a static use of two years. However, at a certain point, you might figure out, hey, my, my uh, secret has expired or is soon to be expired because you get in uh, in your uh, Azure Active Directory, you actually get a warning notification, hey, three months and then it's going to expire. And remember I told you about the verify button? This is where the additional magic of that verify button actually uh, works wonders. Because if your secret is expired or nearing expiration date, you simply go to the settings, click the verify button, and the button for an automatic service connection will check is the secret still valid? And if not, it will generate you a new one for an additional two years. So, very cool feature, often um, not mentioned. And there you have it, guys. We now have a service connection uh, within our Azure project, uh, Azure DevOps project, and our Azure um, subscription. If we are wondering, okay, but what kind of permissions we're having uh, for this uh, in Azure, we can simply check it by clicking on Manage Service Connection Roles, and it will redirect us to where we set the permissions, in this case, the subscription, to the access control, and we can actually check its access on the need, for instance, role as assigned. We can see, thankfully, we renamed it, so we can clearly figure out which one we need. You can see that we have contributed permissions from uh, the service connection to Azure, which will allow us to deploy infrastructure as code, for example. Thanks for, the, for your time, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.